Guys, so welcome back. Today we're going to dive into the mind of one of the most daring and imaginative chess players of all time. You're all familiar with the name of the master from Riga, Mikhail Tau, the 8th world chess champion known for his aggressive, unpredictable and genius level play. He wasn't just a player, he was a player, a magician who squeezed the victories from the most complex positions. And today we're going to take a look at the game he played against his mentor, his teacher, Alexander Koblenz. Mikhail starts with e4, c5, Sicilian defense on the board, knight of 3 d6, knight of defense, d4, c takes d4, knight d4, knight of 6, knight c3, a6, and Mikhail, as puts all his aggressiveness into the action and plays the most aggressive line that exists in neither bishop g5, e6, and now of course f4. Look how good his pieces are. He puts everything on, the, on very good squares. Queen 7, Queen f3. That's the most aggressive approach you can play against Nidorf. And already, I mean, the game was played in 1950s. And that's just absolutely insane. Castle, Knight, Big e7, Bishop e2, h6, Bishop h4, b5. So Bishop b7 is the idea for black pieces. And here, Mikhail decided to go all in and plays e5 which is not the best move in the position and it's actually a miss but it's tough to refute bishop e7 was played and now and now it all starts so queen is attacked but the magician from riga doesn't really care about this he plays e takes f6 he sacrifices his queen on the three of course, his mentor takes it, bishop f3 attacking the rook and also still attacking the bishop on e7, d5. And now, I mean, that's just mind-blowing. Next move just makes no sense. Knight e6. Brilliant move. And the idea is that f takes a 6 bishop h5, check. So knight e6 basically the flex spawn from f7, so this bishop h5 check is possible. And the idea is that basically we'll take this bishop with a check. g6, bishop g6, kid f8. And according to computer, this position is equal. But it's actually very tough to understand why it's equal. f takes a 7 king g7, bishop g3. And the idea behind bishop g3 move is that after king g6, f5 comes with a check. And this bishop attacks queen on c7 and white wins the game. So knight f6 was played. Still, rook e1 attacking pawn on e6, b4. And b4 is a blunder. And now, Mikhail plays not the pass move, but he plays a rook e6. f5 was possible for him, rook e6 was played. He's trying to go for f5, bishop e5 idea. He's sacrificing his knight because, again, he just doesn't care. He just doesn't care. He tries to play the best chess possible, the most aggressive, the most unpredictable ones. b takes e3. And look, all right, bishop, bishop against knight, rook, rook, queen. And it's actually insane. Like, I mean, look, this this bishop is under attack for what? For last one, two, three, four. Okay, now f5 is played. Mikhail Tau finally defends this bishop on g6, queen b7. And queen b7 is a blunder. Okay, it's it's quite logical. His opponent is trying to attack on b2, basically, if lacked, if y do something stupid, queen b2 would be a check. b3, protecting from queen b2, queen d7, bishop e5. And now look at this beautiful, absolutely beautiful pin. 
and now Queen e6 is played. His mentor is trying to simplify the position. And after this king g6, this bishop on g6 is finally taken. And at this point, Mikhail Tal, the magician from Riga, is one rook down. But it still doesn't stop him from winning the game. He plays rook f1, he's spinning this knight. A rook cannot go anywhere to, you know, protect knight h7. Bishop h8. Rook h8, and now again you can pause the video and try to find the best move that Mikhail played here. He played skittish. He played rook f8. And the idea behind this move is basically if knight f8, there is e8 queen promotion and white wins the game. But what happens after this? Isn't this just a piece up? This is what happened in the game. No, because e7, and basically this if this knight goes on next move anywhere, e8 is promotion, so king has to go back, e takes f8 queen, king f8, king g1, and here black resigned and Mikhail won the game, because basically this endgame is simply winning, he has one extra pawn, his king is coming to d3, takes this pawn, takes the rest of material and wins the game. I mean, that's just one of the most incredible games I've seen. I try to find the best games of Mikhail Tal, and I think that this one actually deserves more attention. Again, let me know what other games of Mikhail Tal... I, I just didn't see a lot, so maybe you can suggest something in the comments below. But I, I hope you enjoyed, I hope that was fun. I'll see you in the next episodes of Learn From Legends. Bye-bye.